silent, swift, safe. The maglev transit system offers an automatic on-call service between Birmingham's new international airport and the mainline railway station with the adjoining National Exhibition Centre. A journey that once took 10 minutes by bus now takes just 90 seconds. No more weather problems and virtually no waiting. It's excellent, most impressive indeed. You know, it's a great British advance. Okay. We can do well with export here. I think it's a very smooth ride indeed and something different from what one has experienced before. It's a very good invention, a very good form of transport. It's very smooth, it's most enjoyable indeed. It's really nice to be part of an advance in technology. It's something completely new and very comfortable. The favourable passenger reaction to Maglev confirmed the high hopes of those who selected it in preference to a wheeled system. The chairman of the airport authority and the West Midlands County Council surveyor. Well, here comes Maglev, Stuart. A live, real example in the flesh. And isn't that really good? Here we've got the, the thing that everybody's been working at for all these years. And what's more, just look, there are a lot of people on the car and obviously they're enjoying the experience of riding on it. It really is very good to be in this situation here in the West Midlands because for so long uh, we have seemed to be trailing behind everyone else but now we're restoring ourselves as the uh, in a preeminent situation as far as new technology is concerned. Yeah, I think that's really an important thing because it's, it's a practical thing that's being done. We've got a proper link between the air terminal and the railway station and the National Exhibition Centre and that's needed. Yes, indeed. But it's not just a toy. This is something which is going to make uh, the West Midlands Airport uh, a very attractive airport for people to arrive at and to get away from. Yeah, but of course this man is the man that knows all about the gubbins. It's Eric Dalgish. Well, <coughs> not all about it, but uh, I think first of all we have to recognise that British Rail did a lot of research into uh, what was really needed in this country uh, with regards to maglev. And they came to the conclusion that high-speed maglev was too expensive and would take too much land and so on. But there was a different story altogether for low-speed maglev, such as we have here in Birmingham, uh, because that has the advantage of a comfortable ride, uh, low maintenance costs, and high availability. And that's the importance of maglev. So, great. are we here for a ride? <laughs> maglev is elegantly simple in concept. Understanding how it works is to appreciate its benefits all the more. Instead of pushing down on the rail, like some other magnetic levitation systems, PMG's maglev lifts up from beneath. Automatic electronic control maintains a constant air gap between magnet and rail of 15 millimeters, compensating all the time for variations in side loads and variations in passenger loading. The vehicle uses an electric motor, but one with a difference. It is, in effect, a conventional motor opened out flat into linear form. The rotor now takes the form of an aluminium-covered steel reaction rail in the center of the guideway. The inverter changes direct current into alternating current by sequence switching of the transistor circuits. Three phases are produced in a similar manner. These create a varying magnetic flux which induces currents in the reaction rail. These, in turn, generate a traveling magnetic flux which propels the car along, silently, and with no moving parts to wear out. Maglev guides, brakes and propels itself without contacting the surface and is unaffected by steep gradients, tight curves and slippery surfaces. Track switching can also be built in. Just months after the establishment of the People Mover Group, design details had been settled and construction of the guideway had begun. In this case, reinforced concrete was selected for the structure, but for other installations, steel can be used or 
the track can be laid out at ground level or in tunnels. A two-track elevated guideway at about five meters above ground was necessary to avoid the many surface obstructions and permit a flexible shuttle service between the airport and the railway station. The structure of the guideway was built to conventional civil engineering standards and tolerances and required no new techniques from the contractors. The track itself was factory built in sections and easy to lay. The accuracy essential for the smooth running of the vehicle was achieved simply by adding or deleting shims as required. The two suspension rails are bolted to the cross sleepers which transfer the load to the central reinforced concrete beam. The steel section of the reaction rail is now bolted into position, shims again being used to achieve the necessary tolerances. The two tracks were laid on either side of a central walkway. Expansion joints were incorporated into the suspension rails at frequent intervals. Flux bridges across the joints ensured that the lifting force of the magnets would not be interrupted. With the steel base of the reactor rail accurately located, the aluminium section could be placed in position. A plastic membrane set between the two served the dual purpose of preventing the corrosive effects of dissimilar metals and allowing the aluminium plate to slide easily when compensating for its different rate of expansion.